Hi, good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for attending the session on uh, eMeet Ecol Intuit Labs Mumbai. Ecol Intuit Labs is one of those awesome, awesome schools for visual communication, and I'm so happy all of you all have made it here. Um, we know that there are a few more people still trying to get into this webinar. Um, and uh, we'll just wait for another couple of minutes before we start off. Uh, there's a fantastic uh, uh, team here who's, who's representing Ecol Intuit Labs, and we don't want anyone to miss out on that. So just give us another couple of minutes before we start. It's 6.16 now. Uh, we'll start again. We'll, I'll, I'll mute myself for the next two minutes and we'll start at 6.18. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, so it's almost 618, but I think we'll start anyway. Right, so um, firstly, let me switch my webcam on so all of you can see me. And Jan, could you please switch your webcam on as well? Yes. Yes. Done. Okay, my hair is going out of control. <laughs> okay. Same for mine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so welcome, welcome everyone. We're so happy uh, that you've made it for today's webinar with Ecole Intuit Labs. Um, Ecole Intuit Labs is a French design school that set themselves up in Mumbai, and Jan Guerin heads uh, the school. He's the dean. And uh, he's here to talk to you about the school. So what, how we'll go about this webinar is, uh, Jan would first talk about the school for about 15, 20 minutes, talk about the programs, their industry interactions, and then subsequently we will open it up uh, to the audience for asking their questions. So really looking forward to a lovely session here. And uh, you can take it away, Jan. Please introduce yourself first and then uh, take it away from here. All right. Thank you, Dion. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. So I'm very happy to be uh, here with you. I'm going to present uh, quickly myself. Uh, that will be short. Uh, my name is uh, Jan. As you can hear, I'm coming from uh, France. I'm living in India for about 15 years now and work with Ecole Intuit Lab for about uh, nine years. Um, about the school, so we are a French Institute of uh, Visual Communication, Fine Art, Gaming and Entrepreneurship. And I'm going to launch a little uh, presentation to explain you what is the school about. So, let me find the right button. Okay, Dion, I think you need to give me the access to the presentation. Presenter mode. Yes. Yeah. Done. Perfect. So. All right. I guess you can see my screen. 
So this is a yes, we can see into it. Club. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so in India, we are represented in uh, Mumbai and uh, Calcutta. We have uh, four campuses in all. So two in France, uh, in Paris and X, and two in India, in Mumbai and Calcutta. Uh, why uh, Ecole Intuit Lab? Uh, these uh, two uh, men are uh, Frédéric and uh, Clément. They are the founders of Ecole Intuit Lab. They are French. And they founded the school with another partner. His name is uh, Patrick, who is an academician. And those two are the directors of a very famous uh, branding agencies in Paris called Sync. And three together, they've decided to make a school that will combine the professional aspect that they have from this industry and the academic aspect that Patrick has from a, a, a very long experience. Uh, we have a motto called the creative intelligence at Ecole Intuit Lab, and we really believe in that. Uh, we think that cre creativity without intelligence or intelligence without cre creativity is uh, useless, but the combination of both is uh, what makes the, the things really, really great. Uh, whatever uh, you want to use it for a corporate, for uh, the society or for anything uh, that is needed in communication in this world. Uh, the first pillar is a professionalization. Uh, it's the mix of the studies with its direct usage in the industry. Okay, and from the very first year, the students learn immediately how to give a meaning to what they do and how to apply it uh, to uh, the real world. The second one, we think it's you need to open up to the world and now more than never. Uh, it's very, very important in this industry to not be alone in your corner. Obviously, in this time of uh, lockdown, it's a bit uh, difficult to say, but uh, even then, we are all connected and uh, we know what is happening in Japan, in South America, in the uh, US, in Africa. Uh, all of that is a lot of influence that we have to be aware of if we want to create a good design because influences are coming from everywhere and we speak to the whole world nowadays. We don't speak just to our neighbor when we create something. Uh, I'm sure all of you uh, experienced creating something, putting it on Instagram, and when you do that, you have people from all over the world watching what you're doing. So it's very, very important to understand what is happening outside the, the, the borders. And uh, achievement, uh, obviously uh, doing something uh, is good, but doing it well or even perfectly is better. This is what uh, should be your goal. To, be, to become a, a real professional in this industry. At the Intuit Lab, we have uh, several uh, programs. I will uh, quickly take you through. Uh, the first is our uh, undergraduate program. So we have uh, three main programs there. One is a uh, visual communication and digital design, uh, what people sometimes call uh, graphic design. Uh, we want to call it visual communication because nowadays things uh, go much beyond the simple graphic design. Uh, communicating an idea, an idea to someone uh, is not only drawing something beautiful and applying colors. Uh, it's much more than that. Uh, it's also finding the right tone, finding the right uh, techniques that will move people and make people listen to you. Uh, 
Uh, a very simple e example is uh, copywriting, for example. Copywriting is not something graphic, but it's a very important part of uh, visual communication. And again, you can see uh, these days in social media that uh, the power of words. Uh, some uh, words are striking minds more than others. We also have a game art and game design uh, program. Uh, so it's a three-year program. We tied up with uh, Ubisoft for that, a very big uh, game publisher, and uh, Aberte University in uh, Scotland. So the students have the possibility to finish their diploma with us in three years, and they can go for a fourth year in the uh, UK uh, to get a degree from Aberte University. We also have a fine art program. Uh, it's only in Calcutta, in our Calcutta campus. Uh, it's a four-year program also as a visual communication one. We have a postgraduate diploma in uh, visual communication. So it's an 18-month program. Basically, two semesters, a break, one more semester, and an internship uh, experience. And the last one is a certificate program, which is entrepreneurship program for all people who want or need to start or run a business, uh, but need uh, to put a design touch in their uh, business, which, as I said before, is uh, nowadays compulsory for any kind of business. Uh, we believe that uh, being global is a uh, something that is needed in uh, such uh, studies and the fact that we have uh, four campuses all over the world uh, really help us to be uh, global we also have a strong connection uh, with uh, china because we have a uh, tied up with a campus there uh, to train students before coming to uh, paris uh, and uh, we are going probably to open a campus in uh, Brazil too. Um, an example of uh, the class that we have in Paris, it's an international class where students, uh, while doing their foundation year, also learn intensive uh, French. Uh, our students also uh, go to, Par to Paris, so uh, that's an example of our uh, Indian uh, class who went for uh, two weeks in France uh, to participate to a workshop and, uh, and visit the, the country, obviously. Uh, we have an uh, international uh, workshop. Uh, it's a fantastic experience, so every year we invite three professionals from uh, three different countries. So uh, last month, we have uh, someone from uh, Brazil, from someone from Norway, and from someone from the US to run uh, three different workshops for uh, our students. And uh, it's a fantastic experience because for one week, the students are exposed to a completely different way of seeing uh, design, of uh, methodology, the, the way they work, their approach, the way they think is very, very different and very enriching. We also send some students uh, every year to uh, the same international workshop happening in France in February. Uh, and it's exactly the same uh, on a bigger scale, but uh, they spend a week working with professionals from all over the world there. Uh, we have uh, faculties who are all visiting faculties, professionals from the industry coming every week for a few hours to teach a particular subject. Uh, we really believe that the faculties should come from the industry and should be active professionals. Why? It because in design, things are changing maybe more than every year, uh, probably every month. Uh, and 
having professional active faculties is a guarantee that they know what are the trends, they know what are the new techniques, what are the new tools that uh, are used nowadays in, uh, in design, and they can teach in this light instead of teaching something that they learned maybe 20 years ago and that will become very obsolete uh, nowadays. So we have uh, in Mumbai, we have uh, 71 faculties uh, and all of them are coming from uh, branding agencies. They are freelancers, they come from advertising uh, agencies, some are from uh, gaming studios, etc., etc. We have a, a semester exchange program. So every semester we select few students between two and five uh, to go to our campuses in France and they spend four or five months there. Uh, the good thing is the curriculum there in France is exactly the same as uh, we have here with the same subject. So there is uh, no disruption when they go there. And they spend a full semester and uh, they carry on with what they started to uh, learn here and they come back uh, richer than uh, they was before. We believe that a portfolio is the key to enter the professional uh, world. Unlike other industries where uh, for example, the diploma is very, very important. In design, the first thing you need to show and that will give you access to any company anywhere in the world is the portfolio. So 50% of our efforts uh, during the year is to make sure that the students have a fantastic portfolio. A fantastic portfolio means perfectly presented obviously, but also uh, professionally presented, you know. Uh, I keep telling my students, I don't want the agencies to say, oh, you have a good portfolio for a student. No, we want them to say your portfolio is good by industry standards. So at the end of the four fourth year, this is what they have, a professional portfolio that can compete with existing professionals. Um, I'll show you example of uh, the, the work uh, we do in the campus. So it's a mix of all the levels and, uh, and the courses that we offer. So this is, uh, for example, live model sketching. Uh, here, this is a creativity. This is what our uh, gaming students uh, do. So uh, they, here it's a prototype. They had to make a, a game about fighting the coronavirus, for example. Uh, we have an exhibition, so you have a example of what they do in the foundation year, for example. So in foundation year, uh, they cannot use computer at all during the year. So all you see here is made only by hand. Uh, this is uh, from uh, the third year student uh, in visual communication. So these two uh, won some uh, international prizes with this work. This is a uh, gaming again, uh, concept art. So making uh, characters, props before uh, starting to uh, the production. Uh, an example of uh, storyboarding, for example. Another game. So here one of the students made a prototype in the Unity game engine. Uh, also, uh, because uh, nowadays we have a lockdown and we don't know uh, when it will end, we started teaching online classes. And uh, at first it was a, a way to fix the problem. Say, so, okay, we cannot open the campus, so let's start running classes online. But soon we realized that uh, actually it's an opportunity. We got in touch with a uh, international professionals. Like here you have uh, Pauline Aligier. She's uh, from uh, Ubisoft France. She's a level uh, designer. Uh, she gave us a four hour workshop uh, 
uh, from there. And that's something that we could not have uh, here. And uh, it was a fantastic uh, experience. And now we have realized that even when we are going to reopen the premises, we are going also to keep this teaching online with people coming from various countries because they give a really, really different approach to the subject, which make our students uh, better professionals and better exposed professionals. Okay, that was an example of her. Uh, that's it for my uh, presentation. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And uh, beyond, maybe you can take the. Yes, yes. I'm here. Now. Yeah, Fantastic. Great. So, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool, because I know I've been there to the campus and seen what you guys do, and it's pretty interesting. Uh, so, your. Okay, so I'm going to take this in. in two, three steps. Uh, by the way, anyone who wants to ask a question can please, uh, we're opening it up for questions right now. Uh, so you can please ask your questions and we'd be happy to answer it. Um, so yeah, till, till the questions come in, um, yeah. just wanted to get an idea from you. Now, now um, your ideology is very, very industry oriented, meaning that you have to, students have to interact with industry, they have to work with the uh, uh, live projects, with live projects. So at what stage do they get in? Is it at, in the first year, second year, third year? At what stage do they start interacting with industry? Right, so um, they actually start the first year because as I said, all the our faculties are professionals from the industry. So the first year is a foundation, so there is no direct application uh, in the industry. But the, 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 the approach of the subject, even if it's, like, like, let's say, like, live model sketching, for example, uh, the approach, because it's taught by a professionals, is with a professional mindset you know and not necessarily directly in the technique for the subject but uh simple discipline you know the way you enter a class on time sit understand what the teacher is asking to you for me this is the first step in the professional work you know i see so many students who are not used to that they come they expect something and they go wrong because they don't really listen what is expected from her, from the, from them, and unfortunately, you also see some professionals like that, you know, because uh, we all face this kind of professional. Okay, you ask some some something to a professional, and he's not listening to you, right? And he goes in his own way, and that's the a big mistake. So we teach the students to listen, understand a proper brief, and. Uh, during the foundation, at the end uh, of the year, they have uh, a project week. We give them a brief, and the brief is quite complex, not to execute, but to understand. You have to read it very, very clearly for this reason only. Uh, after that, from the second year, yes, all the assignments are inspired by the real world. Okay, so. Uh, Maybe 50% of them are directly coming from uh, agencies. We also interact with uh, uh, real clients for uh, some of the project. So uh, this year we we work, for example, uh, for uh, various uh, brands. Uh, one was a, an oil uh, brand. Uh, we also have uh, uh, other existing. Uh, brand and uh, some some one is in uh, australia it was some uh, packaging and uh, the work of the selected student went on the market right now if you go on their website you can see all students uh, work for example so before they finish the training they already have a big professional uh, interaction and experience on top of that they have to go twice in an internship so they have a small internship at the end of the second year to understand 
how is it working in, a, in an agency and they have a long internship at the end of the third year so everything they learn so fast so far they put it in action and work with real clients yeah that answer your question yeah that's 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 pretty cool because a lot of the schools that um, we interact with uh, we don't see them working with industry in the first year or you know just after the first year because uh, but it's amazing that y'all are uh, giving that option and i think uh, uh, like you said you know having having industry professionals coming there is, is of course a huge benefit but going down to the next thing um, could you tell us your story what brings you to india and why why have you been staying here for 15 years i mean because okay that's moving from france to india that, that's amazing and that's actually a very very long story so i'll try to make it short uh, so basically i was working for the tv medias in uh, in france i was a freelancer there and i uh, was making uh, documentaries in one hand and i was making some uh, motion design in the other hand and i was balancing the the two uh, basically i did that for a long time and uh, while shooting documentaries uh, i started to travel quite a lot uh, i've been in like 50 countries all over the world uh, to shoot these documentaries uh and among these 50 countries there was uh, india and from india uh, was really different than the rest uh immediately i felt at home there without knowing anyone uh, without knowing the, cu the culture or nothing uh something clicked and uh, I, I really really love the country so that uh stayed in my mind for a long time after that i was really really interested in india from france i was uh, uh, learning about the culture reading about it watching many documentaries uh, till uh, i met my uh, wife who is indian uh, she was a air hostess so she came to paris and uh, we met and uh, immediately i followed her uh, to india and i came here in Mumbai to settle. So in uh, in Mumbai, I started working uh, in uh, motion design and 3D uh, modeling. I was working uh, for uh, outsourcing company there uh, till uh, Ecole Intuit Lab uh, approached me to teach motion design and uh, 3D. So I started that uh, uh, nine years ago. Uh, very quickly, uh, I. I, I took a big interest into uh, the education uh, field. I really enjoy teaching, but I wanted to go uh, beyond that because uh, I thought there was a lot to do, especially in terms of sharing culture. I, I saw a lot of interesting and beautiful things coming from me, French guy, meeting my Indian students. They were thinking things that I could never imagine of, and uh, I, I i could uh, take that and and teach my uh, subject in a very very different manner than i would have done in uh, in france uh, where people have their mind formatted like mine more or less here it was very very different so i think we we managed to to, to do great thing that way uh, by uh, by the the meat of these two uh, cultures and uh, after that, uh, the management asked me to uh, to take uh, the operations of the school, and I started uh, working there full time. Still teaching, but also uh, doing a lot of other things there. All right, fantastic. Because I know that you are very involved with the students as well, with the students and the students' work and and the teaching and all of that. Um, uh, I know yeah, that that's something uh, that's something very important. Uh, I know all the students; they know uh, me all also for uh, for the good and the bad. Uh, because uh, I'm also there to make sure that uh, the discipline is respected. So uh, it's not rare to see me at the entrance of the campus and catching the late comers. So I'm, I'm quite famous for that there. Uh, but yes. 
I know them all. Uh, we have uh, 200 students. I know them all by their name. That's uh, for sure, and it's very, very important for me. I don't want to leave any students out, whether uh, she's good or not. That's not uh, important. I want everything in the same boat, and I make sure the teacher do the same. It's not only the talented one who should get attention. Uh, we have a contract with the parents saying that your kid is going to be trained to be a professional and we make sure that happens. All right, cool. That That's amazing. Uh, so you mentioned that you'll have 200 students. So is this 200 students in one year or spread across all four years? No, it's uh, in the whole campus. Actually, we are a small campus, uh, which is good because we have this uh, uh, very personal approach. As I said, I, I know all the names. I could not do that with uh, uh, 2,000 students, for, for example. Uh, but because we have this uh, small number, uh, we manage. I mean, everybody need, knows each other uh, there. And it makes it very, very comfortable for uh, students. You know, when they have a problem, immediately they can ask anyone in the campus some seniors for example okay how should i do that you know and immediately they, they get what they what they want that way yeah because that's that's pretty cool so that means not more than 50 students in a year so no the batch is uh, are limited to 30 students we don't have okay. more than 30 students in one batch uh, okay. well, so we have big classrooms because we want them to have big individual space, uh, you know, especially when uh, the first year when you create with your uh, hands, you need some large space to see big also. People who have a very, very small space have a tendency to see small and we don't want that. So, and that's the same when they are in the third or fourth year, even if they work on their small computer, we teach them how to use the walls around them and to use all the space because this is how you broaden your vision. All right, so um, yeah, so that's, that's amazing because there's always this debate, you know, should I go to a, a, a school which has a lot of students or should I go to the smaller campuses which have fewer students, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So what we get from you is that uh, number one, you yourself have been a professional designer, professional um, documentary maker, and now you are able to bec have because of these small environments, you are able to interact with every one of these students, and that makes it easier for, of course, the faculty to know every student personally. Number one, yeah. number two is to. Um, like you mentioned, to interact with them, know them, and for the students themselves to integrate with all the other students. I think that's also an important factor. Uh, that's true. That's pretty, yeah. Um, right. Now, coming down to the, the, the industry interactions, okay? Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned that most of your faculty are industry professionals. So what yeah. does that mean when they are, say, for example, looking out for internship opportunities or job opportunities once they graduate? What does that mean for the student? Yeah, so th there are two uh, factors in that. Uh, first of all, yes, uh, having professionals coming from the industry uh, is actually a, a privilege you know, for the students to go directly in the industry and uh, actually in India, I would say it's also the opposite. It's a privilege for the faculties to accept access some creative students. Uh, luckily, we have a very good reputation in the, in the industry and there is a shortage of creative students in India. Uh, so we, are, we have a lot of agencies calling us and asking us to send some students there for internship. So those two combines uh, makes us having 100% placement for the internship and 98% uh, placement within six months 
after the diploma. So we have very, very good number on, the, on, on that aspect. But all the students are placed immediately in internship. Yeah, even during this uh, lockdown time, uh, we managed to approach 45 uh, studios uh, ready to hire students working from home. And now they are, uh, since last Friday, they are all starting doing their internship from uh, home, luckily. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so um, now we don't know how long this COVID is going to stay for. Okay. Uh, what do you see, what do you foresee in the future environment once these students come here and graduate? Because um, do you think there would be more opportunities or less opportunities or more opportunities for consultancy rather than uh, jobs? How do, what do you think the direction will go? Um, yeah, that's that's very interesting uh, question. Honestly, I have many scenarios in, uh, in mind uh, and I cannot predict at all the, the future, uh, but what I see first is uh, my students had an incredible capacity to adapt to the situation. Uh, we didn't have one hour of disruption uh, during this uh, COVID uh, situation. The day the government asked the university to uh, shut or go online, uh, we were doing that for one week already. And the students reacted very, very uh, well and very professionally. I'm very proud of what they did. Uh, even those, for example, who could not find, uh, let's say, stationery and things like that, they managed to creatively adapt to the situation by using uh, uh, makeup, uh, newspaper, or whatever they can, they can find. and uh, do the assignment, you know, they, they, they managed to do it. Same, the, the internet uh, was showing uh, glitches because of the high usage. They managed their timing, they, they were calling people, okay, please uh, connect on this server uh, because my work is there and send it. They all managed to do it perfectly. So that's, that's make me believe that we are teaching the right way because when something like that happens, Yes, we are not lost. We are not uh, destroyed by such a situation. Now about the future, as I said, uh, we experience the online training at first as a need. But very, very quickly, we understood the power of teaching online. Uh, I don't believe in 100% teaching online. I think it's very, very important to meet a teacher face to face. But I also think that teaching online gives you opportunities that you cannot have in face-to-face. -face. So we had many conversations with the founders of the school about that, and we definitely decided in the future to go with a, a minimum of 10% training online, no matter what happened then, because that will give us uh, uh, a quality of uh, training that we could not get uh, otherwise. Also, it's an opportunity for us to put in action the four campus that we have working together and become truly international. And you know, you can go uh, all around the world to find universities who have this kind of possibilities. They are very, very few, very few. Maybe many are international because they have tie-ups and, and things like that but very few have a uh, same curriculum taught uh, in think with the same subject uh, over four campuses uh, uh, in different countries. And we have this power and we really are going to put that in action because we think that students will benefit a lot from this kind of teaching. I think that's a, that's a brilliant point that you bring up. And I would just like you to elaborate on this a little more. What do you mean that all your four campuses collaborated uh, during this time? What, what exactly do you mean by that? Could you please elaborate on that? Yeah, so very sim simply uh, said, uh, working online is a possibility now to uh, work with the 
whole planet. So far, we had interaction with the campuses in France, but mostly it was either all students going there for exchange or for a workshop, or the French students coming here, same thing for some uh, workshop and, and all. Uh, so it was it was still uh, limited, but now we discuss, we we realize that we could have a workshop or a class conducted by one teacher, and not even in India or in France, maybe in US or in Japan, to the whole set of students all over the four campuses. You know, we have these possibilities, and imagine I I don't know for example a typography uh, class run like that the classic uh, typography uh, class at the end each student asking question based on the problem that they are facing in their own culture how enriching can it be to other cultures also like our french students they, they don't know about uh, dev nagari for example right now they don't understand that a type has to adapt both to Latin script and Devnagari script. They don't understand that. They, they never face this problem. They have only Latin. Here, this is a problem that we face. Now they are going, by hearing this kind of question, they are going to see typographic in a different light. So that's what I, I mean by the power of combining different culture under the same umbrella for a workshop or a class. I think that's a brilliant opportunity. I think, um... That's very interesting, number one, and and it's a good opportunity. I think even our students would probably get the opportunity to actually teach somebody else across the world, you know, integrate with them and uh, probably teach that. that. That's pretty interesting. And interestingly, I mean, just a little off, off track, uh, as soon as this COVID-19 issue hit and we, we too started opening up our courses, uh, the DQ Labs courses all across, and, in fact, today I have someone from Johannesburg attending our course. There are people from the Middle East, USA, Peru, uh, Australia, so people from all across. And, and it's amazing to uh, see this, this happening, you know? Um, exactly. So that's very interesting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, right. So coming down to the faculty, okay, um, mm -hmm. you said you have about 71 faculty on your, on your, uh, panel right so these yeah. 71 faculty would come at different times of the year and teach different topics what they are specialized in right how does that most work? of the most of them they come the whole year uh for the two semesters uh but they come like two or three hours per week so each faculty we ask them to commit to these two hours. so let's say for example uh, uh, year two typography the the teacher is working in agency but every tuesday from one to four she will come in the college and teach typography to our students then she gives an assignment and they have a one week to work on the first phase of this assignment on their own and we insist on that uh, because we want to develop their sense of independence, which is really appreciated later when they work in an agency. So for one week, they are on their own. They don't have any contact with the faculty. And they come back the next week, again, the Tuesday at one o'clock, show what they've done. And we go on like that all, uh, all year long. So we have this mix of, I'm not spoon fed by the teacher every day asking, what should I do now? What should I know? No. I work on my brief, I give my ideas, I discuss that with the faculty, and then I have a full week to develop it on my own. That's really uh, what we believe in. I, I cannot hear you. Right, all right. So that's that's interesting. And, uh, and so these these, Faculty, once they commit, then they are there for the whole semester. So the student gets to interact with that student, with that faculty throughout the semester. So it's not like a guest. No, 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 not at all. We also have a guest faculty, special workshops, special lectures. We have this kind of thing. But let's say for 90% of the program, uh, they, they come for one or two a semester. Many come for the whole year also. 
because uh, we want to keep this continuity uh, obviously during the during the year. Great, cool. I'm just going to put out a poll question. You hold on, hold on. Yeah. Uh, let me just try and see how to launch this. Yeah, this is just a, a, a one minute poll that I'm giving out to the students here. Um, okay, cool. And this is open to everybody and it would be interesting to know what people are thinking. Right. Cool. I'm just going to keep this out for the next few seconds. So those who have not uh, filled this out yet can mm -hmm. fill it out. And I will end this poll another five seconds. All Sounds right. good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, right. So uh, the next thing I wanted to know is uh is in terms of the the in uh, how many batches have passed out of uh equal intuit lab so far have there been batches have passed out or not yet uh how many we have i think we have seven seven batches got graduated Graduate. not yeah 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 all right seven and up. and what where have those students reached now i mean what kind of positions have they reached in industry yeah so we have a, a big panel of uh, work profile uh, i would say the big majority of the visual communication students they work in a brand agency uh, many are visual designers there we have a few uh, art directors in this kind of uh, companies uh, we also some of them working in advertising uh, companies uh, we have uh, maybe a 10 percent freelancers so students who really uh, need to freelance or want to freelance uh, for various uh, reasons so those one are open to any kind of uh, of a product uh, we have many working, for example, for they are specialized in uh, in uh, design for uh, restaurants and the food industry. That's something quite popular amongst our, our students. So uh, food photography, uh, menu design, signage, all of that is quite popular also. And we have a little percentage uh, of them who started their uh, own uh, agency um, so not so many but uh, maybe 10 10 students started their own uh, agency something like that yeah. all right and they do some and quite interesting job yeah sorry all right, all right. uh ui ux and game design these are oh sorry do you have <coughs> ui ux or do your students yeah yeah so UI UX is part of uh, visual communication. Uh, some are very, very successful in, uh, in it. Uh, because I said uh, in India, everybody needs a designer. There is a big shortage. Uh, it's even uh, more true for UI UX. It's very, very difficult to find good UI, UI UX designer. Uh, many people th think that UI UX is a uh, learning a prototyping software and it's almost the opposite of that huh? it's everything about thinking and communicating uh, the right idea so uh, our, our students learn that also uh, actually in the last year starting from this year we have uh, something called the kettle kettle it's a kind of incubator where students make group of five and create a startup 
And we did that uh, with a startup Rezo, which is an incubator in Mumbai. And they have to launch a digital product on the market with real investors. Uh, everything is real in that case. And uh, they have their jury, their last jury tomorrow. That's their final uh, jury. Um, so during that year, it's, it's pure uh, UI UX. They do only that. But not only the visual aspect of it, but uh, the strategy, the marketing, all aspects of digital uh, uh, products are covered during this uh, year. And, uh, and since they really have to launch the product, you, you know, it has to uh, fit the needs of the, the consumers outside. So that's a very interesting product. And uh, amongst alumni, uh, some are doing very, very well in uh, UI UX. Interestingly, uh, most of them are in Bangalore now. It seems that there is a, <laughs> a big attraction uh, and a big need for a UI UX designer there. So they, they shifted. Uh, in this uh, town. In yeah, I think, I think there is a huge uh, influx of IT companies here based here. So uh, this tremendous potential for, for uh, opportunities here. Uh, right. So uh, the other very interesting thing is game design that you'll, yeah. you'll have. So, so um, is it's a new course, right? It's, relatively it's a new, new course. Yeah. We started last year. Um, so the, the little story is uh, uh, Ubisoft, uh, giant game publisher, international game publisher, uh, open studios uh, some time ago in India, I don't remember exactly when, uh, and they grew up very, very, very fast. I think they started with 34 employees and now they have uh, 1100 or something like that in Pune and uh, more than 100 in, uh, in Mumbai. Uh, the thing is, they have again problem to find uh, creative people pro properly trained. So they came to see us because they really like the program that we had for uh, visual uh, communication and asked us if we could do uh, something for uh, game design. And uh, it took us some time to, uh, to agree first and to build a program uh, because we don't believe in putting a program on the market that we don't really control, you know, that we don't master. So uh, it took us three years to say, yes, okay, we're going to start that. And together we built a curriculum. So based on their needs as a triple A studio and our knowledge of the academics. And we merged that and uh, and created this fantastic uh, three-year program where students have also a foundation like they have in visual communication and uh, the second year they learn all the principles of game art and game design they also go for uh, internship they are going to start next week with ubisoft or student then they go for the third year which is the professional training where they co cover a lot of uh, interesting subjects like uh, in uh, artificial intelligence or uh, procedural generation for uh, open world. Uh, and then they have a long internship, six months internship, where they, they become uh, real uh, professionals. After this uh, diploma, they have the possibility to go to UK in uh, Scotland, in Aberdeen University, to go for a fourth year and get a degree uh, there. So this is how the, the program uh, works. So it's it's a, a program run along with the organization you said called Ubisoft. U B I. Yeah. How do I spell that? U B I S O F T. They okay. are very, very famous uh, for uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, for, uh, uh, I mean, many, uh, many games. Uh, it's, it's an old company. Huh? They, they did uh, Prince of Persia. They, they did all these very, very uh, big uh, games, very famous uh, games 
Far Cry is them also. Mm -hmm. uh, all, all of that. Uh, Just Dance, it's an international uh, success right. that they, they, they are making. All right, all right. I think I think that's pretty cool uh, because there you're getting straight. I mean, the, the program is run along with Ubisoft, and uh, students would probably get an internship with them as well. I think that's that's very very interesting as an option. Yeah. Right now they are all going internship with the Ubisoft mm -hmm. uh, because all students this batch wanted that. But we also leave it open to. Uh, to intern with other studios. We don't have an exclusivity with uh, Ubisoft. Uh, if someone wants to go, let's say, for uh, mobile uh, gaming, for example, or to go, there are many uh, international studios in, uh, in India now. You have uh, Rockstar, you have Gameloft, you have uh, Electronic Arts, all of them are in India. So they are free to go in other companies too, also for this internship. Cool, that's very interesting. All right, so I think we are almost uh, come to the end of the session. Um, if anyone wants to ask the last one or two questions, it's, we're open for that. Um, but yeah, but a little bit about your campus, all right? Uh, how mm -hmm. important do you think it is to be in the center of the city where you all are based? In the center of, sorry? Of, of Mumbai. How important is that? Yeah. Um, but the, the, the most important thing is uh, uh, it's an average distance for many, uh, many students. You know, it's not uh, uh, dedicated only to uh, South Mumbai students or uh, North uh, suburbs, but more or less everybody can reach the campus in a decent time. No. Uh, Mumbai, when I say decent time, is not never so short. And I think it's a bit the same in Bangalore also. The, the distance are not very big, but it takes time to get there. Uh, but we are not far from the station, uh, not far from the highway. So any anybody can uh, reach us uh, easily, actually. Uh, so, so, so but, it's a good you, location. but do you think that being there has an advantage to be more accessible to companies and, and uh, professionals and opportunities? Yeah, they, okay. definitely. Uh, I mean, there are many, many agencies uh, in our neighborhood. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. And also uh, for anyone uh, coming from a bit further, uh, it's never too far again. And because we have professionals coming to work with us, many of them, they take a three hour break from their uh, company to come and teach uh, in our school. And then they go back to, uh, to work. So, uh, so yeah, it makes it uh, practical for, uh, for everyone, students and faculties. Yeah, so I think I think that's cool. I've been to the campus, of course. Um, you know, in in a lot of places where when students think of a campus, they think of you know the huge buildings and huge spaces with playgrounds and all that. And um, it's a little difficult for for students to change their mindset and understand that okay, we work out of a smaller campus in the middle of the city, but that is also. True. It has its own benefits. Uh, in yeah, its own way. I, I've been told many times that uh, our campus looks like an agency. Actually, uh, it's and it's designed that way. So, uh, and I think that's really how you feel when you you are there, not really in a in in a school, but more like in, yeah, in a professional environment. Uh, obviously, we have a canteen, a restaurant there. Everything is a uh, is a uh, accessible for them so it, it it's very uh, very comfortable for uh, for them and they have a lot of space also uh, as i said we have large classroom for uh, a little number of students so it gives them some good space to breathe all right all right thanks 
Thanks a lot, Jan. I don't know if you'll have a yes, video, um, you know, a, a video walkthrough of your campus, but. Uh, that's funny that you are saying that. Uh, we are just finishing one. It should be online by the end of the, the week. So people can really see how it looks both in Mumbai and Calcutta. So yeah. Fantastic. So, so, uh, so in this chat window, if you can type out your uh, website. Yes. So that, that anyone right. wants to have a look at that. Into it. No. In. Yeah, now you have it. Yep. And can I enter my personal uh, email ID of also course. if of anyone needs to add? Okay. So this is Jan Garim at callintuit.com. Yeah. So if you guys have uh, any question, uh, don't hesitate to uh, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to help you with yeah. anything. Perfect. So y'all can. Uh, so um, Jan really heads the School of Design at Equal Intuit Labs, and he's the right person to connect with. Uh, if you need any clarifications, and it's going to be great um, to see if students choose to come there. All right. Uh, right. Thank you so much, Jan. It's been a lovely session with you. We've had a. It's been very insightful and very interesting to know. Uh, a lot more about Ecole Intuit Lab. Uh, thank you, Dion. A big thank you from Shilpi, uh, Shilpi Shah, and uh, glad, glad to have you here. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. All right. Hope to speak right. to you soon and stay safe. Sure. Sure. You too. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye.